For the past couple of days, the fleet have been sailing very fast to the south in the northeasterly trade winds, blowing in nicely from here. Uh, we can see we've got Hugo Boss, who's roughly at 7 north, kind of the marker of the doldrums. Um, and you've got Sea Explorer, your Project Monaco, Boris, uh, about 200 miles behind him. Um, but obviously they're coming into the very complicated doldrums up ahead. Um, so we're just going to have a quick look at that. So what the doldrums are is effectively the convergence between the trade winds of the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. Um, and they converge along this line. And what this line is called is the intertropical convergence zone. Um, and what you get is a lot of um, a lot of uprising air. So the air arrives here, and then it effectively gets put on a conveyor belt, and it uprises, and then heads back to the hemi each hemisphere. Um, with that, you get a lot of activity, a lot of clouds, a lot of energy, and uh, it's very chaotic, and and the wind is very difficult to predict. But we'll have a quick look at the forecast. So you can see the doldrums marked by these lighter blue patches. Um, you can see you've got a rather large one off Africa. Um, this is semi-permanent and um, and effectively with all this system moving towards the west you have the interaction of the land mass and that creates this lighter wind patch here so the fleet definitely don't want to cross here. Um, the star is marking roughly where Hugo Boss is um, and we can kind of see some features of the wind and what the what the doldrums might have but uh, generally the forecast is is uh, is quite unreliable due to the system being so chaotic. So there's a few other tools the skippers can use to to figure out the best path through the doldrums. So firstly, they can have a look at the overall picture. Um, you have the synoptic map here from NOAA, and uh, you can see that we've got this big feature here, tropical wave, orientated north south. And basically, what these these form when the uh, when these two different air masses um, converge, and you get effectively. Um, the mixing creates these tropical waves um, and it generally marks where the doldrums are most active. Um, if we saw where the fleet was, we could see that Hugo Boss, Apivia and Linked Out were all heading slightly further to the east and it's I think effectively to try and avoid sailing through this tropical wave. If we have a look at the um, at their positions here, Hugo Boss has moved slightly to the east so as Apivia and Linked Out, so that's probably to try and avoid this large feature here. The next thing we can look at is the scatterometry. So this is the winds derived from the uh, sat from satellite images. Um, effectively, the satellite will take a picture, and it will um, determine the different heights and different features on the water, effectively the waves. Um, and from that, it will estimate what it thinks the wind strength is from this. But we can see much finer details as a result. You have a, a lighter patch here. You have a big wind shift there, um, and it's very useful to the skippers to be able to see these features. But um, obviously, it's it's not a forecast, and it's can only tell you the wind right now or uh, when it was when the satellite last passed over which is only every 12 hours so finally we have a um, the satellite images so what we have here is the infrared um, satellite images and you can see the doldrums marked very nicely by these by the colorful clouds um, showing the, the, the strong activity if we play that forward you can see how the the cloud development uh, occurs in the doldrums and also if we remember where that tropical wave was, it was somewhere roughly here in this line, and we can see this is where right now we have the most uh, the most uh, cloud activity and the most uh, energy in the system. So um, keep an eye on the fleet as they sail through these doldrums. We could see some changes in the uh, in the positions of the fleet, um, and let's see how it goes. <laughs> 